Welcome to another lecture by Medico Medics, Genetics Chapter 10, Epigenetics. In this lecture, we will talk about the concept of epigenetics. What is it? Talk about mechanisms. Go into detail on DNA methylation. Talk about histone modification. And continuing to epigenetics in development and disease, in medicine, its future, and end with a summary. Now, epigenetics is the study of heritable changes in gene expression that do not involve changes in DNA sequence. Let's repeat that. Epigenetics is the study of heritable changes in gene expression that do not involve changes in DNA sequence. So the key idea here is genes can be turned on or off based on external or internal signals. Why does it matter? Because it explains how the same DNA produces different cell types. For example, skin cells versus nerve cells. And it links environment to gene activity. So epigenetics is like using a bookmark or using bookmarks to highlight certain pages in a book. And this book here is genes, right? So it's used to highlight certain pages so they're easy to read or to skip. Now let's mention some mechanisms of epigenetic regulation. So first we have DNA methylation. So methyl groups attach to DNA, typically silencing genes. Example is inactive X chromosomes in females. Another is histone modification. So chemical tags on histones loosen or tighten DNA, affecting gene expression. And histones are these proteins which DNA is wrapped. Then we have non-coding RNAs. So small RNAs like miRNAs regulate gene expression post-transcriptionally. Now, DNA methylation. So what it does is it adds methyl groups to cytosine based in DNA. Remember the pairings of A to T and C to G in DNA? We had adenine. Um, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So here we're talking about cytosine. So we add methyl groups here. And this silences genes by preventing transcription factors from binding. Clinical importance, abnormal methylation is, for example, linked to cancer, like tumor suppressor genes being silenced. So an example is hypermethylation of the BRC1 gene can increase the risk of breast cancer. So the idea with DNA methylation is like putting a sticker, right, over a certain word or words in a book, and this will make it uh, unreadable. Say you have a system reading it and then producing proteins following that. You hide this little part, or you use a rubber and remove it or whatever, so it becomes unreadable. Ergo, this protein that is then being the result of it will disappear. Now, the second way was to do histone modification. So here we are talking about chemical changes to histones affect how tightly DNA is wrapped. And we know that loosely wrapped DNA is accessible for transcription. So essentially to continue to produce uh, proteins and move into translation while tightly wrapped DNA is not. So if we can find a way to tightly wrap DNA, it will not be accessible for transcription. So examples could of uh, acetylation is it opens up chromatin activating genes. And methylation can either activate or silence genes depending on context. So histone modification is like loosening or tightening a belt. Loosening it makes it easier to use the DNA. Role of non-coding RNAs in epigenetics. These regulate gene expression without coding for proteins. For example, microRNAs, these block translation of mRNA into protein. Remember we had transcription, DNA to RNA, and then we had from messenger RNA to amino acid chains, meaning protein production. 
So what this does is it blocks translation, this bit right here, from producing proteins. Now we have long non-coding RNAs as well. These interact with chromatin to regulate gene activity. Clinical example is that microRNAs dysregulation is linked to cancer progression. So non-coding RNAs are like, um, think of traffic signals uh, on the, when you're driving a car or something. They're like traffic signals that tell your genes when to stop or when to go during protein production. Now, let's talk about epigenetics and development. So, as we mentioned, epigenetics refers to changes in gene expression that do not alter the DNA sequence, but affect how genes are turned on or off. Now, these modifications are crucial for cell differentiation, where different cell types like muscle, nerve, or skin cells develop from the same genetic material. This is achieved through mechanisms like we mentioned, DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding DNA regulation. So these can control gene activity without changing the underlying DNA sequence. And some examples could be imprinting, which is um, parent-specific gene expression. So some genes are expressed only from one parent's allele while the other, while the other is silenced. For example, we have insulin-like growth factor 2, which is typically expressed only from the paternal allele while the maternal copy remains inactive. And this parent-specific gene regulation is crucial for normal growth and development. Another, another one is X chromosome inactivation, where we silence one X chromosome in females for dosage compensation. For example, in female mammals, one of the two X chromosomes in each cell is randomly silenced to ensure equal gene dosage between males and females, because we both have an X chromosome. And this is occurring through the action of something called the X inactive specific transcript gene, which coats the inactive X chromosome and prevents its gene from being expressed. And this mechanism prevents an overexpression of X linked genes in females who have two. So these epigenetic processes somehow ensures proper development, cellular function and stability, etc. in an organism. They also play a role in disease when disrupted. Like, for example, a genetic disorder like Prader-Willi syndrome, which is caused by imprinting errors. Now then, epigenetics and disease. So, for example, in cancer, hypermethylation of tumor suppressor genes, like um, a tumor suppressor gene could be P53, or as mentioned several times in these lectures, is the BRCA1 gene. Um, and hypermethylation of these tumor suppressor genes can silence their function, leading to uncontrolled growth. Hypomethylation can activate oncogenes which promote cancer progression. Methylation-based therapies, for example, can help treat cancer by reversing abnormal DNA methylation patterns that silence these tumor suppressor genes or that activate oncogenes. So we have, for example, DNA demethylation agents like desetabine, I think it's called, and these reactivate these tumor suppressor genes by removing excess methylation, right? Because hypermethylation of these would silence them, leading to uncontrolled growth. We have these uh, demethylation agents that would then reactivate the tumor suppressor genes, leading to inhibiting this uncontrolled growth. 
So targeted epigenetic drugs can selectively modify methylation patterns to restore normal gene function. And by correcting epigenetic dysregulation, these therapies can slow tumor growth, enhance immune responses, and improve uh, treatment outcomes. So this is offering us a very promising strategy when dealing with cancer. And we also have, for example, in neurodegenerative disorders. So in Alzheimer's disease, for example, epigenetic modifications alter memory-related genes, affecting neuron function and accelerating cognitive decline. In metabolic disorders, epigenetic changes link environmental factors like diet and obesity to diseases like diabetes. And it does this by affecting genes involved in insulin regulation and metabolism, etc. Now, some environmental factors in epigenetics. So factors that influence epigenetics include, for example, diet. So nutrients like folate or vitamin B12 support methylation. Toxins, so chemicals like bisphenol A, can alter epigenetic marks. Stress, so chronic stress, can modify gene expression. We have transgenerational epigenetics, so epigenetics changes or epigenetic changes can be passed to offspring affecting future generations. So, for example, a high fat diet in pregnant mice caused obesity related epigenetic changes in their offspring. What about in medicine? So therapeutic applications, epigenetic drugs, so DNA methylation inhibitors, like we just mentioned, and histone deacetylase inhibitors are used in cancer treatment. Personalized medicine, so tailoring treatments based on epigenetic profiles. We have these biomarkers to detect cancer and other diseases early. Like we mentioned before, acetacidine or acetidine however you want to go with that, is a drug that reverses DNA hypermethylation, for example, in leukemia. What does the future hold then? So we have a lot of trends in research. So we have advances in single-cell epigenomics, understanding epigenomes' roles in aging, using AI for these analyses. Potentials include reversing aging-related epigenetic changes developing gene therapies targeting epigenetic modifications. So in summary then, epigenetics regulates gene activity without changing the DNA sequence. Mechanisms include DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding RNAs. Environmental factors influence epigenetic marks linking lifestyle to health. And epigenetic research is driving new therapies and advancements in personalized medicine. And that's the end of chapter 10. Continue now to chapter 11. Thank you for listening.